strange things are going on. This plant, for example, has a branch here and another one there. Normally, a corn plant is not like that. There is always only one ear per leaf. But look here. There are three ears coming out of the same leaf. They are really monsters. We send a plant sample to a biotech lab to see if maybe it contained genetically modified genes. Unfortunately, the test came out positive. First of all, if you find a strange plant, you should immediately remove its stamen, because that's where its pollen comes from. In any case, you must be very vigilant in monitoring your plants. Sí, tenemos que ser más vigilantes con nuestras milpas. So, the surprise came when we looked at these samples and we discovered that the samples that we all believed would be non-transgenic had already transgenic DNA within them. It was a very big surprise for us to discover that this, these uh, land races of corn that were kept by people locally and supposedly maintained over 10,000 years had already been reached by transgenic contamination, mostly from the U.S. Since then, the National Ecology Institute has confirmed the contamination of Mexican corn. Roundup Ready and BT genes have been found in corn from five regions of the country. It's a complete disaster, yes. All these technologies, either it is GM or biotechnology, they're actually making the farmers completely dependent on the market. Monsanto's GMOs have inundated the world, principally in North and South America, Asia, and Australia. After only 10 years, transgenic crops now cover 250 million acres. 70% are Roundup resistant, and 30% have been genetically modified to produce an insecticide called BT. Between 1995 and 2005, Monsanto acquired over 50 seed companies throughout the world. These companies produce corn, cotton, wheat and soybean, and also seeds for tomatoes, potatoes and sorghum. Everywhere, people worry about Monsanto's monopoly, which in the long term threatens to wipe out all non-transgenic varieties. Monsanto is a very powerful corporation with many, many linkages to top-level persons in government. Uh, I think the prevailing ethic at the federal government was f f biotechnology is so important that we can't let a few little questions about cow safety or human safety get in the way. I have never seen a situation where one company could have so much overwhelming influence at the highest levels of regulatory decision making as the example of Monsanto with its GM food policy in the government. Every seed that is in the market in cotton today is linked to one company or the other licensed and controlled by Monsanto. Once they have established the norm that seed can be owned as their property, royalties can be collected we will depend on them for every seed we grow, of every crop we grow. This is the best way to control the populations of the world. Last month, a new study published in the Journal of Food and Chemical Toxicology found that rats fed Monsanto's patented NK603 GMO corn were more likely to develop tumors and suffer severe liver and kidney damage. The study followed 200 rats over two years, divided into 10 groups of 10 males and 10 females. Three groups were fed the NK603 corn alone. Three groups were fed the corn treated with Roundup herbicide. Three groups were not fed the corn, but their water was treated with Roundup. And a control group was fed non-GM corn and plain drinking water. The researchers found that the rats that consumed the GM corn or the Roundup, separately or combined, were prone to serious health problems that typically did not manifest until the fourth month of the trial. Industry-sponsored rat feeding tests only span three months. In the wake of the publication of the new study, the popular GMO information website gmwatch.org was targeted with an aggressive cyber attack that succeeded in almost crippling the website. 
The site operators had to direct traffic from their main page to their Twitter account at the height of the attack, which they noted was not the first time that outside forces had attempted to take them offline. A 2009 study by the Union of Concerned Scientists found that genetically engineered crops produced no significant yield increases, and what increases in yield were detected were almost exclusively due to traditional breeding and improvement in agricultural practices. In 2010, Germany announced a ban on the cultivation of Monsanto's Mon 810 genetically modified corn. In January of this year, BASF, the last firm still developing genetically modified crops in Germany, was forced to stop working on GM crops because of widespread public backlash. In 2011, Peru passed a law banning genetically modified ingredients for 10 years to prevent, in the words of the Peruvian Agrarian Commission president, the danger that can arise from the use of biotechnology. Also in 2011, Hungarian authorities destroyed 1,000 acres of corn which were found to have been grown with genetically modified seeds, which are banned under Hungarian law. In the wake of the French rat feeding study, Russia immediately suspended the importation and use of Monsanto's GMO corn. In India, the Supreme Court has just called for the Indian government to follow suit with a 10-year ban on all GMO crop field trials for the next 10 years. A renowned British researcher who was immediately fired from his position at a prestigious Scottish research institute after announcing in 1998 the disturbing findings of severe health effects on rats subjected to feeding tests of a new genetically modified potato variety. Um, a comparison of a GM with non-GM potatoes, uh, we fed uh, that as a part of a, a, a proper diet to rats and uh, we measured all sorts of things, growth for example, how these young animals were growing, uh, what happened to their inside and what happened to their immune system. The fact is there was no investigation of Monsanto, it didn't exist, nobody investigated those uh, those st studies. Nobody, period. What they investigated was Kate Jenkins, the whistleblower. They made her life a hell. So even though there are three different government agencies, the USDA, FDA, and EPA overseeing the food system, we have no labeling requirements for these GMOs, genetically engineered foods, and uh, there's, there's no warning for, for the consumer, and there's no testing. And all of this is because the people at the top of these agencies have said, we don't have to have testing. That's right. Yeah. So what, the way it works now at the cor is the corporations do testing themselves. Mm -hmm. They summarize the results and hand them into the government. And what the government says to them, you know, the, it's very interesting when you actually look at the documents, what the government says. They don't mm -hmm. say, we say this is healthy. They say, we see you've done the testing. That's all they say. Mm -hmm. So nobody's really liable. It's pretty bad. Uh, across the board, we're looking at uh, some conservative estimates. Some say very conservative, 80 plus, 86 plus percent for corn. Most estimates say 95 plus percent. And then the soybeans is the absolute worst. See, people are saying now that virtually 100 percent of processed soy, so processed foods that contain soy, is genetically modified. Yeah, so obviously there's been hundreds of different studies. There would be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of studies on GMOs and Roundup, but Monsanto, since they own the patent to their genes, they can go around and say, you're not allowed to study this. And that's why one of the reasons that France is doing so is because they're not based in the United States, where Monsanto has such a firm grasp on the politicians and figureheads in the United States. But we can see just from this uh, peer-reviewed PubMed research dating back years and years, that Roundup alone has been linked to 29 associated diseases, many of which have over 40 pieces of peer-reviewed research to support this. So, for example, it's been linked to lymphoma in 40 studies, DNA damage in 27 studies, hormonal disorders in 24, low testosterone in 22, another lymphoma, pesticide toxicity, chemical exposure, liver cancer, mercury poisoning, I could go on, skin cancer, kidney damage, liver damage, lymphatic cancer, oxidative stress, uranium poisoning. So it just goes on. And that's just Roundup right there. That's the Roundup ready crops that are being drenched in Roundup massive amounts because they're so resistant. Well, BT or is a bacteria. It's a natural okay. bacterial insecticide. And organic farmers use it mm -hmm. because it's a natural uh, bacteria. And what they do is they spray it on their plants once or twice a season if they need to. Mm -hmm. What they did was they genetically engineered this BT so that every cell of BT corn is generating this BT, which is this insecticide. 
So they searched for 12 years and they found a bacteria again, mm -hmm. a bacteria that's naturally resistant to Roundup. And so they genetically engineered that, that bacteria mm -hmm. into all these plants and they call them Roundup Ready. Right. And there's Roundup Staple Ready. crops essentially. Like yeah. They're before, soybeans, corn, yeah. cotton, etc. And canola. Canola. And so right. what happens with those plants is that you can spray a field with Roundup and everything but the Roundup Ready crops will die. In order to create its GMOs, Monsanto breaks the species barrier using a Roundup resistant gene harvested from a bacterium. This gene is placed on microscopic particles of gold, which are fired into the soybean cells with a gene gun. The gene penetrates the DNA and creates a protein, making the plant resistant to Roundup. When the herbicide is sprayed on the crop, it kills all the weeds, leaving the soybean plants intact. Today, Roundup is sprayed all over Paraguay by plane or mechanical spreaders driven by unprotected farm workers. As soon as the crops were legalized, the company obtained the right to collect royalties on each ton of soybeans the country produced. Just like in Brazil, The state of affairs in 1999 includes Linda Fisher moves from the Environmental Protection Agency to Monsanto, Michael Friedman from the FDA to Monsanto, Marsha Hale and Josh King from the White House to Monsanto, Margaret Miller from Monsanto to the FDA, William Ruckelshaus from the EPA to Monsanto, and let's not forget Michael Taylor, who went back and forth several times. Michael Taylor. Monsanto's former attorney, recruited to become the deputy commissioner of FDA for policy in 1991. He was in charge of the FDA GMO policy. It said, we don't see any difference with GMOs, so companies like Monsanto that told us that PCBs, Agent Orange, and DDT were safe can determine if GMOs are safe on their own, never tell the FDA, and never tell consumers. Michael Taylor became Monsanto's vice president. He's now the US food safety czar. In January 1999, San Francisco conference, biotech conference, they asked them to describe their ideal future in 15 to 20 years. And the executives described a world in which 100% of all commercial seeds were genetically engineered and patented and sold along with Monsanto's associated chemicals. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine said, the animals fed GMOs have reproductive disorders, immune system problems, and gastrointestinal problems, as well as organ damage, accelerated aging, and insulin and cholesterol dysfunction. So the crops are weak and sick, and the animals are weak and sick. And we eat both, and we eat the Roundup, which can then chelate or hug the nutrients inside of us, depriving us and leaving us defenseless. They are releasing the products of this infant science into the entire ecosystem, knowing that they cannot recall the self-propagating genetic pollution from the gene pool. The genes already released today will outlast nuclear waste, assuming the species survive. And they're releasing it so that everyone who eats is exposed. Monsanto's PCBs, a very toxic substance, are in the blood of polar bears. They've released genetically modified mosquitoes in three countries. The U.S. may be next. They want to introduce genetically modified salmon, pigs, moths, everything, nature. They do not respect biodiversity. Consider terminator technology, engineering crops to produce sterile seeds. Because Monsanto has, for 11 years running, been voted as the most hated corporation on earth. 